In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a listing, and then I'll show you how to make changes to your listings after they're submitted, and add photos, delete photos, add attachments, and schedule open houses. So to get started, you just hover over the input tab. Next, you'll notice you'll just click on the add new button to add a new listing. Then you'll be uh, you'll choose what property type your listing is for. In this example, I'm just going to pick on residential. Here you'll notice three tabs. The fill from a realist tax, start with a blank listing, or make a copy from a cross property. Fill from realist, as long as your property is in one of these counties, you just simply pick the county and search for it off the tax records and then it will auto populate as much information as it can from the county tax uh, records and, and input it into your listing for you. If it's not in one of the seven counties then just simply search or start with a blank listing. And then the copy from a uh, cross property search allows you to make a copy of one of your old listings. Here you would just simply type in the MLS number or do a search for that listing and then hit the fill from and it would auto populate as much information from that previous listing to get you started. But in this example I'm just going to use the fill from a realist tax. Now I'm just going to pick Montgomery County and just to keep it simple I'm going to use the board of Dayton Board of Realtors address here at 1515 Main Street. Once I have that I hit the search button and in this case, it actually found two 1515 main streets, a north main and a south main. I'm just going to fill from the south main street address. This pulls in as much information here. And as you notice, this is a little different look than how it was in the old system. Here we have several tabs that will guide us through the rest of the listing input. So the required fields, as you'll notice, are in yellow or in gold here. So for example, fill from an agent or find an agent. If you don't know the listing agent's ID, you can just hit the find an agent, which opens up this screen, type in as much as you know about it, and then run your search. I'm just going to cancel this. So, But if you do know your agent ID, just type it in. And then hit the refresh button here. That will just run it, refresh it, and populate your information from the database. Do the same thing if you have co-listing agent ID. Next, pick your property subtype. And in this case, I'll just say single family. Transaction type, sale, lease, or auction. I'll say sale. Uh, the next set of fields are for condos. So if I had chosen a condo, that's where the lease amount and sublease and available date in these fields would, uh, would uh, be considered here. After that, I'm just going to go to the next tab, the general tab. And like I mentioned, just go through this and fill out as much information as possible, but you must enter all the required fields that are in yellow here. So I'm just going to pick my area. In this case, I'll just pick uh, the Dayton area. Uh, you can pick your county, you can pick your school district, and here I'm just going to say it's the Dayton School District. Uh, municipality, obviously, just pick your uh, proper one. Enter your listing price. Agreement type, anything else. If you have questions, there are the uh, question mark here that you can click on, and it'll uh, explain as uh, information that you need on here. So... Play, pay attention to these question marks here. After that, you'll notice it says map not found. But if as long as you have the address, street number, street name, and zip code, you can hit this get lat long from address. By clicking that, it will map your property. Now, I recommend that after it maps a property, that you go in and double check it to make sure it's correct. And you can do that by hitting the set lat long manually. By clicking that, it opens up the map, and then what you can do here is just move it to the right location or just move the map over, 
And if you need to, it even has the parcel boundaries for each property. So you can just click on it, see the owner's name and address. So if you're having trouble trying to locate it, that might help you locate that property. And then if you need to, you can hit place new pin and then it just moves that pin to where you have it at. You can also move it back and then say place new pin again and this time I'll put it right on top of the building. When you're done, just click the done button here. Now, after you map it and you confirm that it's mapped correctly, you can also choose the Google Street View here. By clicking on the Choose Google Street View, this opens up and shows you what Google thinks your property street view is. It is. You can uh, realign this. You can even drive up and down the street if you need to, if it's on the wrong location. You can even zip it around if you need to, because Google may not always accurately uh, place it right. And you can even zoom in on this if you need to and place it exactly where you want other agents and the public to see this Google Street View. Once it's there, you just hit the OK button and now your Google Street View is, is uh, selected. Just remember, not always, not all addresses will be used on the Google Street View. So sometimes it'll not be available for you to choose just because Google hasn't went through that, such as a new subdivision. Uh, Next, what you can do is just go to the next tab, Property tab. Here you can just add your bedrooms and bathrooms and all this information in here. You can uh, do your year built, listing date, expiration date, and so forth here. Same with uh, miscellaneous. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward here. Just fill out as much information as you can. Uh, and you've obviously got to do the required fields. Remarks. Uh, we do have spell check on the remarks here. And next is the rooms. Now rooms is done a little differently. You'll notice that here you start off by picking one room. And you can pick something like uh, the family room. Then you can put in your length and width and the level that it's on. You can hit the, uh, oops, let me put first floor here. And let me put, uh, let's say, a 12 by 10 length and width there. There is a more button here so when you click on more you can just pick your next room such as maybe the kitchen, length and width. Now I want to show you something. The length and width and the level are required fields here for each room. I know they're not in yellow but if you hit the validate button here what validate means it will go through and see what fields are missing, what required fields are missing and it will show you with a red exclamation point. So if I hit the validate button here, it'll go through and now you can see that the length and width and level of the room is missing. So I just need to fill this in here. And you can see up here I've missed some other required fields as I went through this. Uh, down here I've still got uh, the bath level one, uh, baths level two information to fill out. But uh, getting back to my rooms here, just go down this list and pick your rooms, such as master bedroom, the length and width and what level it's on, and so forth. Uh, and then next is the features tab, and just go through and pick as, as many or as little information of these uh, information that you need here. Okay. Uh, after that, and like I said, you can hit the validate button, but if you're ready to submit this, you can go and hit submit but you'll notice if I try to submit it now it goes through and it won't let me until I fill out the required fields. If I scroll down a little bit here you'll notice it gave me uh, these, uh, er these errors in the input form. I can click on that and it opens up and it just tells me which ones I missed here. Uh, at any time I can hit cancel input and it, it just loses this input form here. And it's also nice to know, uh, to remember, that there is an auto-save option. Even though I, I'm not uh, seeing it here, it does auto-save it. So if something would happen and I logged out or closed this here, when I log back in, it would remind me that there's a, a listing that was partially saved or not finished yet and it would save it. But I can use the save as incomplete at any time. And by doing that, it just saves that listing. That is the 
MLS number, and that will be its MLS number when it goes live. So even though it's not uh, saved or submitted live to the system, that will be the MLS number when it does go live. Now, it's still uh, an incomplete listing, but I can still go in and add and edit photos here. And I can go in and add and edit supplements or attachments. By clicking on Add Edit Photos, this opens up and allows me to browse my computer for pictures. Now, we are saying for maximum quality, upload photos at least 1024 by 768 in size. That's just the recommended. You can still submit photos that are smaller than this, but we recommend at least 1024 by 768. So you shouldn't have any problems uploading any photos. Here you'll notice that uh, you can still add 100 photos, just like in the previous system. And then if you hit the Browse button, Browse just allows you to go through and, and pick, your, uh, pick your, uh, your listing photos, wherever they may be found at. And then just start clicking and holding down the uh, mouse control button. You can select as many listings as you like here, or as photos as you like here. Once you select the ones you like, just simply hit the open button. And it just goes through and starts adding these photos in here for me. Now you can see the little red dotted uh, box around each photo. And that's just saying that uh, these photos are outlined in red are lower than the recommended minimum size here. So they'll, it'll still take it. It's just letting you know that it's smaller than, than what it uh, would like to have. And then under each photo here, uh, or on each photo, you can actually click on it. It opens it up bigger, and you can use the Enter Description down here. Enter Description just allows you to go and type in uh, some information that describes this, this photo or this picture here. We do have Spell Check down here. And if you need to, up here in the corner, we do have the Rotate option. So you can uh, rotate it if the photo is taken from a... Uh, at a different angle. Okay. Uh, obviously, when you're done, just hit save. And then next, realigning or reordering these photos, just grab the column here and just drop it where you like these photos to be at. And now you've got it rearranged. And when you're done, just simply hit save. And then the same thing will go when you're trying to add attachments. Come in here where it says Add Edit Supplements, and Supplements are Attachments. Just hit that. And then here you would just give it a, a, a name and pick your type, Agency Disclosure, Conditions, or, or what have you here. Here you would say Choose File, just browse your computer, find the attachments, and then hit the Upload button here. Once you upload it, it, it shows up here, and then you can go through and choose a second, a third, a fourth one, and then they would just show up here in this uh, up uh, top section here for you. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. Okay, well that's how you add a listing. All I did was go to inputs, and then I hit the add new, and then I followed the steps to get all that information there. Now, to modify a listing, a listing that's already in the system, whether it's incomplete or active or maybe pending, and you need to modify it that way, is just come in here under Quick Modify. Now, as a broker, I'm actually logged in as a broker or an office level person. So here it says Select an Agent. So if you're at an office level or a broker level and you have the ability to uh, modify or, or add listings for an agent, just open this up and choose your agents. And by doing that, then I would see all of their a uh, listings that I'm able to add or modify in here. Okay. Now, if I'm just an agent, I would not have this top part, and I would only be able to see my listings here. Okay. Now, you'll notice uh, when I pick the agent up here, now I see each listing. A means active, P means pending, and I is an incomplete listing. Now you shouldn't be seeing any solds or expireds in here. We should uh, be filtering those out. So, uh, so you should only see listings with a status such as an active, active pending, 
or or pending and then that way I can uh, modify those changes there but I shouldn't see any expired or sold or anything that I'm not allowed to, to touch or modify out there so if I need to finish that listing that I just started earlier then what I could do the one that says I for incomplete I can just click on it and then it opens it up and now what I can do is go back and finish it I can go to the residential property form I can go through and, and continue filling all this information out on that property that I forgot to do. I'm just going to hit cancel here though. Uh, let me pick one. Let me hit cancel again here. Uh, let me pick another one that's already active and in the system such as this top one here. I'm going to click on that one and this one like I said is already live so you can see a little thumbnail uh, picture of it you can see the address up here and you can see the MLS number of this property. If I click that MLS number it just takes me to a full, uh, a bigger screen, uh, a full detail view where I can see all the information and then I can even hit this expand views of photos and by clicking that you can see more information here. Okay, So what I could do uh, if I need to I could just uh, right click on this and uh, print this out for my records if I need to. And then just to confirm, it's got all the photos. I can scroll through it like this, too. Uh, I'm just going to uh, close this and go back out to where I was at. But that's by clicking on that MLS number here. If I need to make a price change or uh, add things to remarks, things like that, I would just go back into the residential part, and that would allow me to, to make the price change and, and things like that. If I need to change it to active pending, I would just click active pending. If I need to change it to pending, I would click that. If I need to change it to withdrawn or terminate or lease, it would uh, populate in there too. So I would just go in here and, and click on what I need to and fill the information as much as possible there. Uh, let me cancel this one now. Uh, if I need to schedule open houses, right here is where I click to schedule open houses. Just uh, put the open house type the date, time, end time, and description here. And then submit it when I'm ready. Just going to hit cancel again. Uh, virtual tour links I can add here and just uh, uh, copy and paste that virtual tour uh, URL into here and then submit it. And then down here is manage those photos or manage the attachments or supplements here. Okay. So here, if I want to add some more photos, just go right back in and start browsing and add more photos. Or I can select the ones I want to get rid of, and then I can delete them down here. And maybe I've got different ones I, I replaced them with. So I'll hit cancel here. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So what it, what it all starts with is the input tab. Coming in here, that's how I go to add a new listing. And if I'm an office admin or a broker, I would have the ability to first select my agent. And then I would come in and pick their listings that I need to modify. If I'm only an agent, then I would, I would only see this field here. I would come in and just pick my uh, information that I need. So I click on it, and then it opens it up. And now I can uh, modify those changes there. Okay. Well, that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, uh, contact us and let us know if we can help you. Thank you.